Hi, I'm Jacob Beningo, a certified software development professional and an embedded software consultant. Today we're going to talk about 10 tips to accelerate your engineering career, or to even jumpstart your career. Whether you're just starting out as an engineer, or whether you're a seasoned professional, there, can, there will always be periods of time where it feels like your career comes to a, to a halt or a, st a slow crawl. And in these periods of time, there's a number of things that you can do in order to help jumpstart your career and make sure that you continue to move forward towards the goals that you're trying to achieve. Now, the first tip, the first thing that you can do, and that you should really be doing at all times, is to take the time to plan out your career. When you start working at a company, generally you have a, a yearly annual review where you sit down with your boss and you say, hey, these are the good things I've done this year, these are the things I can improve in, and in the upcoming year, this is what I'm going to try to do. And while this is a great exercise, if you're only really thinking about your career once a year, you're probably going to start to stagnate and you're going to end up stuck in a place where you really don't want to go. Careers are very dynamic, just as engineering fields are in general. They're always changing, always moving forward. There's uh, new things going on in the industry. We need to be learning things, uh, keeping up to date. Uh, so just like that, uh, we need to think about our careers more than once a year. Truthfully, we should be taking the time probably once a quarter to look at where we are, where we want to go, and be keeping in mind um, you know, what it is that we want to get out of our career. There's a number of things that we really should probably be thinking about. The first is that we really should be looking at where do we want to be going in the next quarter? Where do we want, where do we want to be next year, two years from now? Uh, where do we want to, what's the end game? Where do we want to be five years from now or even ten? Answering these questions can be difficult, but uh, we really should be keeping them in mind more than once a year. The second tip, uh, the second thing that you should be doing is making sure that you keep your resume up to date. You should be building a resume that shines. And it should be a resume that isn't just a list of things that you've done or just a, a list of skills. Your resume really should be showing any potential employer or your current employer the great things that you can do. You need to be showing how you were successful and not just listing things uh, just like everybody else. And there's a number of places you can go to really get great engineering tips or great tips for your resume. Um, and one of them is even on EDN. Uh, we did a uh, 10 tips for a successful engineering resume as part of my Embedded Basics blog. Uh, it was 10 different tips on things that you should do to, in, to make your resume stand up uh, above everybody else. So I recommend you take a, you know, a couple minutes and, and check that out as well. Once again, that's at edn.com, uh, Embedded Basics. The third tip is to master the tools of the trade. Make sure that you are a master of all the tools that you have to use in your career. Whether you're an electrical engineer, an embedded software person, a power and energy guy, uh, make sure that if you know, you're using the oscilloscope every day, make sure that you understand the absolute, every detail about that piece of equipment. Make sure you understand how you're connected into a circuit, how it affects measurements. Make sure you understand all the different ways you can trigger the system, record data. There's so many different things um, that our tools allow us to do and most of the time we don't even utilize 80% of the features. Uh, as a med software engineer, uh, our IDEs, our debuggers, our compilers, there's so many things that can be done, so many advanced debugging techniques. Uh, even the C language itself, there's so many advanced techniques uh, that most people don't know about. So take the time, even set a time, uh, one lunch period uh, per week to d really dig in and look at how you can go about uh, becoming very proficient and a master uh, using the tools that you use on a daily basis. And what you'll find is that it'll help you set yourself apart and also allow you to um, impress people when you have interviews or when you're trying to move on, uh, move up the ladder in your career. The fourth tip is to step up to the plate. A lot of times I've seen uh, uh, engineers, what happens is, is a boss may come and say, hey, I'd really like you to go and, and take this on. And I've seen engineers say, yeah, you know, I'm not really interested in that. Uh, I don't want to do it. Uh, maybe it's some type of uh, dirty work. Uh, one of my greatest breaks was actually when something like that happened. A senior engineer was at to do something and they basically flat out refused. Uh, the owner then wasn't sure what to do and it happened while they came to me and said, hey, would you be willing to go and do this uh, piece of uh, a project or, or go here and do this? And I said, absolutely yes. And what ended up happening was I went, I did it, uh, it was very successful. And then what happened was, was rather than the next, the next time something was needed, something that was very critical that affected the business itself um, or our development cycle, 
rather than going to that senior engineer, suddenly I became the 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 guy, the go-to guy. And what that did was it helped boosted my the awareness of me and what I was capable of doing. It allowed me to get involved in a whole lot of different things. It didn't constrain me to an individual box. And by stepping up to the plate and uh, accepting new experiences and things outside your job description, it helps you become more well-rounded. It helps you elevate your visibility uh, to employers, to your current employer, or even future ones, when you can show them that, hey, I don't just play in a small, tiny box. Uh, the fifth tip is to never feel satisfied. Always be hungry uh, to learn the next thing, to go on and uh, design the next thing, or um, you know, to really keep, keep moving. Don't ever be happy when you reach, a, be happy when you reach your goal, but always set another goal past that so that you get there and you say, okay, great, this is a great stepping stone, but I really want to be uh, two steps further in my career, two steps further uh, in my understanding of how C works or how these tool chains work. And basically keep on pushing yourself. Never feel satisfied and feel like, oh, I've made it. Because what happens is as soon as you feel like you've made it and you stop trying, Engineering is a very dynamic field, things are always changing, and it's very easy to start, suddenly slip down the ladder and realize that, hey, I've actually fallen behind. So never feel satisfied with where you're at. Uh, the, the sixth tip or recommendation is that you should, should be experimenting outside the office, outside of your work. We go to work for 40 hours a week, we're very focused in on what the task at hand. You should spend a little bit of time, whether it's just two hours a week, uh, perform some type of experiment. Uh, you know whether you're interested in low power design, whether you're interested in uh, C language techniques, or even on how to use maybe a spectrum analyzer, logic analyzer, or more details about an oscilloscope. Set a time aside just a little bit of time every week and do some experiments. Get a development kit. Write some sample code. Really dig in and understand how these different pieces work. Uh, what you'll find is that by experimenting outside of work, if you're searching for a job, that will suddenly allow you to have perhaps a, a sample project that you can physically take in and demonstrate in real time, hey, look, this is what I'm capable of, this is what I can do, rather than simply saying, oh yeah, at company X, I developed this thing and I did a couple little things here and there. If you can actually physically take something there, show them, hey, look, this is the code I developed, this is the piece of hardware I designed, these are the problems I had, this is how I solved them, that goes a lot further than just being able to talk about something if you can actually show it. So experimentation outside the office is something that can be absolutely critical when you're trying to make that next step in your career. Uh, the seventh thing that you can do um, is learn how to control conversation. When you go into an interview, uh, people are going to have uh, a specific agenda that they want to cover. They want to ask you these qu set of questions or they want to learn about these things about you. And there may be things that you yourself want to uh, demonstrate or talk about that. Most of the time uh, in an interview or even in just a standard meeting, people aren't going to want to necessarily uh, themselves know it, but you want to make it known because it's an important skill. So learn how to be able to reflect and deflect uh, the conversation in such a way that you say, oh yeah, answer their question briefly, but then say, but, and then get the information that you actually want to show and demonstrate yourself. Uh, another thing that you can do, uh, which would be maybe the eighth tip, would be to pursue a higher education or a cert certification. Uh, these are things that could help set you apart. For example, you could go and get a master's degree, a PhD, you could get uh, your professional engineering certificate, you could get a uh, certification through IEEE, like the Certified Software Development Professional Certificate. There's all kinds of different ways that you can go about setting yourself apart uh, from other people, that your, your co-workers, but also um, possible competition when you're trying to seek uh, a new job position. The ninth thing that you can do is, uh, that's highly recommended, is find a mentor. Find a senior engineer who can help mentor you, who can explain uh, the things that happened in their career, their pitfalls, the good things that they did good, um, and allow their experiences, uh, learn from their experiences, and take their recommendations. And if you can have more than one mentor, that's even better. But at least try to find someone who is a senior engineer, even if they're retired, uh, but someone who can help guide you through uh, you know, the career path and provide you with recommendations on what you can do. And finally, uh, the tenth thing that you can do is make sure that you use uh, social media to some degree to help boost uh, your, you know, your, yourself and your awareness. This can be as simple as making sure that LinkedIn has all your up-to-date information, that you have a good summary, that you show the projects you've worked on, have good educational background, and you've gone out and gotten recommendations from people. Make sure that you keep it up to date and that it's a way for people to find you so that maybe you're happy where you're currently at, but it could be that the, an opportunity that's going to completely change your career and accelerate you to a completely different uh, 
uh, level is just around the corner and you want those people to be able to find you. So hopefully, uh, you know, if you keep these 10 things in mind, you should be able to see that even if you, hopefully it will prevent you from stagnating your career, uh, that you'll always be continuously moving forward. But even if you do start to stagnate a little and you need to jump start or accelerate where you're at, hopefully these 10 things, if you follow them, you should find that your career will move forward and that you will have a much more fulfilling career. So until next time, once again, I'm Jacob Beningo, and I hope that you have a great week.